Lakehead had quite a significant effect on Banks Avenue School in, in our community. We were out of action for uh, over six weeks and we were one of the last schools to go back after the 22nd of February earthquake. We had quite a bit of damage done around our grounds and our services, uh, so all our sewerage system had to be replaced, quite a bit of our water system had to be replaced. So we set up some uh, worksheets and things for kids to do on our website and so the children were able to keep a little bit of learning going. But it was a very busy time for all of us getting the school ready to get back into it. Uh -huh. Our house got like damaged and so we had to move. Living by the river because it was just so beautiful any time of the year and any season. And it was always busy, there was always something happening out there. After the September earthquake, our house was in an area that had been, you know, pretty badly damaged, but we weren't too badly off. Um, Although, you know, we described our house as having a sunken lounge and, you know, just the general jokes that people were making about their houses at the time. Uh, we lived in a suburb called Bexley. Uh, after the February earthquake, though, it was, um, that whole area was, was basically written off by the government and, um, yeah, we had to look for a new home. Love spread your wings. Love because we used to live at 376 Ambleside Drive and because of the earthquake we had to move which meant that we moved in with our cousins for about three months and we're sharing a household with 12 people and occasional visitors and but then after that we moved into a rental which we have been living in for the past three and a half years and only about four months ago, we moved into our new house, which we are still The tears fall down, tears fall on the solid ground. As pages turn, my walls fall down while I stand. I think I've been affected by the earthquakes in just about every way. I think they've touched um, relationships and connections and places geographically, places that are used for work, places that are used for recreation. We will stand tall, we'll rebuild our lives. I was in um, Cashel Mall, so that was one of the places that was um, quite um, horrific to be in. Um, so that has stayed with me. Um, and then with our home, having to, to move home. Um, but saying being affected by it, um, at, at the time it was a terrible tragedy, but I feel that we are lucky, very lucky, that myself and my family are very lucky to be where we are today in our new home. Well, I have been affected by the earthquakes because we used to have lots and lots of fun there and we used to go down the road and see our cousins quite a lot. I love the amount of space we had and in the backyard and we always did like lots of dancing in the garage and it was really fun. We 
only actually lived in Burwood for about 18 months, or not even that actually, before the first earthquake happened in Burwood, I was there for about 6 months prior to that, we were in Shirley. Um, but favourite things were the new neighbourhood that we moved into, and um, the Travis wetland, um, and the closeness of um, the school and the community that, that was in Burwood. Well, my favourite things that Aidan said before the earthquake was when Dad would used to paddle us to preschool and to primary school and that would be really fun because we would see lots of people along the way. I liked how our neighbours, we always used to hang in and stuff and then when the earthquakes happened, most people moved away at the time. So I mean, don't really get to see each other as much. We'll break through the red. The lights were pitch bold. We will stand tall. We'll rebuild our lives. We'll I think after September had this real sense that we were all in it together and we were gonna find the solutions and things were was you know, things were gonna be okay. I think after February there was a real tailing off of that, it became far more directive, their meetings were really more about information given rather than exploring information needs, you know, between communities. So I think that the downside was that none of the agencies really came together to create a single source of truth. The hardest thing is to see all the houses that have had to be pulled down. One of my favourite moments was after the earthquake when um, we had some friends that lived down the road when we moved into our rental and one of my favourite times was when we went down there one afternoon and we played hours worth of games of life <laughs> accompanied by a lot of food and it was really fun. That was when we had no power. So. I think one of my favourite moments post-quake was probably also in the middle of the quakes. We'd had the big ones and we were back visiting our house because we weren't able to live in it. In fact, we'd had so many quakes by this stage that I realised my kids were starting to get pretty used to it when we were sitting at the table, a friend was over visiting and a big shake rolled through that would have been, I think it was uh, over five magnitude. And all that happened was conversation paused for a moment. <laughs> no one flinched, no one moved, no one jumped under the table. They just kind of stopped in the middle of the sentence and then carried on again. <laughs> and I thought, this is great. My kids are not feeling high stress at the moment. It's changed quite a lot because my friend Tara um, and her family, her sister, her brother, her mum and her dad and her dog, well her dog died but um, well it's changed quite a lot for me and for them because we were really close because they were only one house away from us and um, We'd come to them when we needed something and they'd come to us when they needed something and we were really close as friends and family. Well, I lost my home totally on the 22nd of February when the um, earthquake struck, the flooring in the concrete flooring in the house simply split and allowed all the liquefaction to come in. And many things, of course, fell down in the liquefaction. Well, lots of my friends have moved away and I'm not so close with them anymore and I, it's really different because I used to love my house lots and 
and it had been demolished and it was really kind of life changing I guess since I was born in that house and um, my family was really sad when it got demolished and lots of my friends have moved and I miss them lots. We found the children to be fairly resilient. We had a couple of visitors that came from overseas to visit the area and they visited and spoke to our children and they were quite amazed at the resilience of the children. When they were speaking to the adults and the children they felt that the children were probably more resilient than the adults, which was quite an interesting thing for us. So that was a real positive for us, the way our children um, adapted and when they came back to school were able to get on with what they were doing. The ripples just seem to go through every part of life, so even though the, the quakes were kind of events that happened, the ripples just keep on turning up. New, new implications keep coming around as, as things keep hitting people that are close to you and, um, or all sorts of other areas of life. They just, the new ripples keep turning up all the time that just impact on things. I was at Banks Avenue School and now I'm at Chitsuan Intermediate and the distance of travelling to school is quite a lot longer and usually a bike and I don't have many friends living around me which is a change. Some of my favourite things in Avonside before the quakes were um, our connections with neighbours in the neighbourhood. Um, we were close to, to schools, we'd walk to school and so we'd collect friends along the way and things like that. Um, and neighbours that we would have riverside parties with that on the riverbank for birthdays or just for the sake of having a riverside party. I had round about 20 centimetres around my feet where I was sitting at the time of the earthquake and um, all my exits were blocked because the doors wouldn't open A because of the liquefaction and B because the house had twisted. It was a very good suburb. Um, it was quite central to the city. It was about, th about three and a half kilometres to the city, to the city centre, and also to Kiwi2 Park and the beaches, which made it a very good, um, I thought, a very good suburb. And we always had river walks with the Avon River wandering through the suburb. There was always plenty of places to walk. It feels like Avonside just almost isn't there anymore. I mean, any suburb has a bit of a sense of identity. Sometimes it's, it's history or the houses that are there. It's a lot to do with the people who live there and the neighbours and the relationships. And, and all of those things are what make a place. And nearly all of those things are, are gone or vastly altered. I did enjoy um, the Memorial Day that we threw the flowers into the, into the river by the bridge, while the bridge was still there. That was nice, but uh, that wouldn't be a favourite moment, it was just a nice, memorable moment. Um, I, suppose, I suppose just seeing the kids happy again and settled, because it was pretty unsettling. I think 
the the council's plans for Burwood as far as the the river, the Avon River, and uh, making in, into reserve the the red zone land. I think that will be a great um, resource for people of Christchurch to use once once that does happen. My message to the City Post Quake is that uh, we must always hold on to that time immediately after the earthquakes when we all came together. You know, the west came to the east, the north came to the south, and we combined all of our resources to get through. And that's how we're going to recover as a city. I think it would be to aim high and move forward and hope. I think that's something that Peaks Avenue community um, have done well and I think it's something that will guide them into the future that we really need to have high expectations of what we want to achieve for our kids and that we are moving forward and hope from the sad times that we've had. It's going to take a long time, lots and lots of patience and it will be a wonderful city when it's rebuilt. So I think if I had a message for Christchurch it would probably be just to enjoy whatever you've got whether you're in the midst of horrible circumstances or good ones, enjoy what you've got. Find things that there are always, there's always something that you can find to enjoy. My message for Christchurch is, you know you're from Christchurch when your mum gets excited about a different coloured port on the side of the street. Stay strong. Don't give up on Christchurch. Christchurch is going to be so cool and so exciting as long as big investors don't give up on us. Just put the past behind you and stuff. My message for Christchurch is hang in there and whenever you're frustrated just think of the person who has to write out the terms and conditions. Yeah, stay strong and um, think of yourself, make time for yourself and uh, move forward but do remember um, what we went through was, was a big thing and to, to look after yourself. Just keep smiling, Christchurch. Oh, my sweet river band, take me down till the moment. My sweet love of mine, lay right down till the sun it rises out of the east and into the sky. John has got my son, he was an old. Son. And the trees are all stark bare 